Bruno pulls his taxi up to the retro-futuristic vehicle, nose to nose with the other car, kills the headlamps and ignition, then steps out of the cab, door still open. Nice car you got yourself there, mister. Work for the government? Bruno asks, leaning on the cab's doorframe. Excuse, excuse me? Cabby, Fowl asks, sizing up the broad-shouldered man in the bulky trench coat. The man's face, illuminated by the street lamp, makes his skin appear gray, like granite. Damn it. Fowl chastises himself. I should have said granite instead of cabby. No better granite tower. Missed my chance. Yeah, you're uh, facing the wrong direction, though. Bruno continues, closing the door to his cab and approaching. One-way street, pal. You want I should call the cops, Bruno? Asks the newspaper seller. Fowl jerks his head around to give an exasperated look at him. Fowl wonders to himself. Since when is the newspaper man playing hero? What's his angle? I gave him good money too. Where's the loyalty? Where's the love, man? Fowl asks, glancing at the newspaper seller and then back to Bruno. The night air hangs thick with the scent of rain and asphalt, each drop a reminder to Fall that he's in a real place, and these are real stakes. You got a problem with the police, fella? Bruno asks, taking a step closer, motivating Fall to move away and cross between both vehicles, ending his retreat at his own driver's side door. G G Gestapo? Mean anything to you, pal? Fowl asks, his voice tinged with agitation. The police are no more than secret police. The only reason they exist is to protect those above you, he adds, pointing upward. Bruno gazes at the street lamps, buzzing overhead like tired bees, casting long shadows that cling to the hoods of both cars, as if reluctant to let the light escape. And you've got a problem with those above us, right, pal? Bruno asks carefully squeezing between the two cars and standing at the corner of the hood directly in front of Fowl's driver's seat. In response to this, Fowl opens his driver's side door and stands behind it, using it as a kind of shield between them as he continues his rant. A few of those service to selfers above you need to meet a guillotine and then maybe things can start to get better around here. Yeah? You've got to make those parasites on top truly scared, utterly fucking terrified, before you'll see any change down here, on the ground. Interesting theory, Bruno says, placing his hand on the hood of Fowl's car. Well, you being a newcomer around here and all, it seems to me you might be talking about your own neighborhood, don't you think? The rant is finished in Fowl's mind, and wishing for no further debate, he gets into his car and shuts the door between them. No need to assume a defensive posture, young man. Bruno calls out, loud enough for the man inside the vehicle to hear him. And so soon, too. We haven't even been properly intro... Fall revs his engine to life, and at once begins rising vertically, while also easing away from Bruno on a diagonal trajectory back toward the very roof he'd been on earlier. We'll be deuced. Damn, Bruno says, tossing his cigarette to the ground. Looks like we've got ourselves a problem, Matilda. Bruno loosens his tie with one hand and removes his hat with the other. He then turns his head to one side, cracking his neck and stretches out his shoulders a bit, while keeping his gaze fixed on the flying machine. Just now arriving at the rooftop, of the building. Time to crack this case wide open, he yells, leaping, yes, leaping a good 15 meters to the corner of the same building. His trench coat flaps in the wind and comes to rest as his hands and feet make contact with the edifice, the fingers of one hand latching onto the stonework with ease. Bruno bends his knees and springs himself up the remaining distance to reach the roof, now on top. He eyes the flying machine as it hovers just a few meters above the rooftop. However, the driver, upon seeing Bruno's sudden appearance, begins to elevate the vehicle even higher. 
Acting quickly, Bruno reaches into his trench coat pocket and withdraws a small, handheld device, aiming it at the vehicle. A brilliant discharge of energy arcs through the air and envelops the craft, rendering it inoperative. All of its electrical systems shut down and the shell plummets, dead weight, onto the roof below, jarring and stunning the occupant briefly while also collapsing part of the concrete slabs that make up the roof. Bruno quickly approaches the car to rescue and apprehend the driver. Clenching his stone-like fingers around one corner of the door of the strange vehicle, he penetrates the plastic exterior with ease and manages to grip the interior metal frame, which he then uses to rend the door open fragments of plastic and metal flying in every direction. Then, just as gingerly, Bruno grabs a still dazed Fowl by his left shoulder and yeets him from the vehicle, sending Fowl flying through the air, where he tumbles not so gently onto the ground a few meters away. Welcome to the school of hard knocks, Swabby. Class is in session, Bruno says, taking a quick peek inside Fowl's now dead vehicle. The interior is dark and unremarkable, save for a design style that won't come into fashion until the next century. Meanwhile, Fowl rolls with the landing and manages to come up into a crouching position, though he's lost his hat in the tumble. He quickly snatches it up. With Bruno now between him and his car, Fowl opts to dart left and sprint across the roof, leaping down a few meters to a neighboring rooftop. He lands gingerly, turning the landing into a forward roll. Glancing up at the roof he just jumped from, he doesn't wait for Bruno to appear. He simply takes off running again. For his part, Bruno catches the movement in his peripheral vision and wastes no time in pursuing. He looks over the edge and sees Fowl's form growing smaller, so he leaps down to the next rooftop without hesitation. However, Bruno's mass and density mean that this leap ends differently than Fowl's. He slams against the gravel, tar, and concrete slabs beneath his feet like a cannonball. He continues on, unperturbed by the damage his fall has inflicted on the roof, as though he has done this countless times before, having chased down his fair share of hoodlums in the past. Who the hell is this guy? Fowl asks himself as he parkours over one ledge and lands on another, then vaults over a fenced area, dashing between the pipes, wires and bars of a water tower. Not your typical townie, that's for sure. Bruno is having similar thoughts as he tries to keep up with the agile fall. Bruno's brute strength is key to the pursuit. Though he wreaks havoc on the aforementioned pipes, wires and bars that cross his path. Foal slides down a vertical metal drain pipe and lands on the rooftop of a one-story building, then leaps down the few meters to the street below, ending with yet another tumble before he continues running. Bruno ignores the drain pipe and simply performs a great leap forward, arriving at the lip, that is, the edge of the one-story roof. He uses one outstretched hand to meet that edge and gently pass himself over it, careening into the cobblestone street below, the bricks shattering upon impact from his stone-like, dense body. He then continues the pursuit. Both men push through hanging laundry, race through an abandoned building, and finally dart through an open window ending up at the end of an alley, where Fall looks around for an exit while trying to catch his breath. It's no use, though. Brick walls line Fall's sides and loom behind him, and the brick wall that is Bruno Braxton blocks the way out. Fall has found himself in a dead end, 